two long-standing Baltimore arts institutions, now with two new leaders at the helm. I have already kind of dubbed uh, AVAM the People's Museum. Yeah. The People's Museum just means that all people can relate. We want to make the Baltimore Symphony Orchestra the symphony for Baltimoreans. That's it. Jonathan Hayward is about to be the first person of color to lead the Baltimore Symphony Orchestra, while Janine Whitfield is only the second director in the American Visionary Arts Museum's 30-plus year history. This morning, we sit down with these two trailblazers, the mark they want their institutions to leave on this city for years to come. And good morning, everyone, and welcome to 11 TV Hill. I'm Jason Newton, and Baltimore's American Visionary Art Museum is one of the few museums here in the country dedicated to self-taught and intuitive artists. Last year, founder and executive director Rebecca Hofberger announced her retirement. She then selected Janine Whitfield, the president of the Heidelberg Project in Detroit, as her successor. And as Whitfield told me, she's already feeling right at home here in Baltimore. Denise Whitfield, welcome to Baltimore. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here. A very short time. What, what have you picked up so far? Have you, have you seen crabs? Have you, oh have you gone gosh. to Inner Harbor? <laughs> I've been to steamers. Okay. Hammer, crack. Yeah, yeah. Uh, some, but I thought I knew how to eat crabs until someone, very kind, showed me yeah. how to properly eat crabs. <laughs> But I love them, so yeah. yeah I've been Never thought you'd need a lesson on how to have your dinner. <laughs> well, you need a lesson because you don't want to eat crabs when you're hungry. Yeah, yeah, right, you know, right. You're trying to dig around finding yeah. meat. But um, I learned a few things, and I appreciated that. But Baltimore, in general, yeah. it's hot. Yeah, I love it. I'll tell you what I love about the AVAM, and then we can we can trade notes. Mm -hmm. I like walking into the AVAM because it feels like my neighbor's art. I feel like there's some museums you'll go into, and it is not accessible to me. That's right. It means nothing to me. Uh, when I walk in the AVAM, I feel like I've seen it before. Yeah. Um, what attracted you? Well, that's a big one. First of all, I want to say that it would have taken a lot to pry me out of Detroit. Yeah. I've traveled, I've been to six continents and cities in many different places. And when the uh, recruiter invited me to come to Baltimore, she said, just come to the museum. Now, I had known about Rebecca, had heard about the museum, but I'd never been there. And when I walked in there, I spent three hours, wow. literally. And what I wanted to say about your comment, I have already kind of dubbed uh, AVAM the People's Museum. Yeah. The People's Museum just means that all people can relate. Mm -hmm. And that's powerful. And, and certainly not to, um, uh, well, it stands out. I can't do anything about that. It yeah. just stands out. Really and nice. everywhere we go, we were in New York. I was in New York with my director of development. I'm at a conference with Kohler. And I told her that, you know, I'm AVAM's new director. She said, oh, and that's the response you get. Yeah. And it's a wonderful, wonderful collection that Rebecca has amassed and the, the whole idea. Look at where we're sitting. Sure. So it, it attracts all kinds of people, not just a certain class. Yeah. You, you mentioned Rebecca and how, I mean, this is a unique situation. You don't mm -hmm. usually follow the co-founder of a museum. And I'm guessing, that's right. <laughs> I'm guessing that's a daunting task for somebody. Yeah. It is, but I think our work, my work in Detroit is similar. Yeah. She incubated something very different. Um, and to many naysayers who, what is a visionary artist? You know, what is this really all about? And um, I incubated the Heidelberg Project in Detroit, yeah. you know, to people, naysayers, bulldozers, fires, yeah. all kinds of things. So there's a kinship there in that we both believe in innovation. We both believe in people. Mm -hmm. And I think we both wanted to do something that was going to make a difference in both cities that need hope, sure. healing, love. Yeah. It's all underrated, yeah. that kind of thing. When you look at the Heidelberg Project and you looked here, look here, I feel like the, the face of an artist has changed a little bit. Activism mm -hmm. is huge. We have Devin Allen here whose images just show people, just raw images of it. Uh, paintings, I mean, you name the medium and you, you still see it in it. Do you see? that shift? Have you noticed that now there's, I feel like there's more meaning behind? The I think it's needed. And yeah. what's happening is our culture and the consciousness of people is shifting towards, you know, things that mean more. And, you know, like I, I say this, the under 40s, they're not their parents' children. No. They're, they're, they're rambunctious. They want change. They want to see things happening. So I think the acceptance for 
this kind of consciousness, the timing is good for that. And that's why the visionary artist is so important because they come from a place of the soul and they come from, and I call them visionary artists. I don't call them outsider. I don't call them folk as no. if to suggest that it's somehow not as good as, but it's just a place creating from the soul where you're trying to share a message that's needed and it resonates. And AVAM resonates with people when they come in there. Yeah. And all different kinds of people. Yeah. That's why it's the People's Museum. Right? Yeah, you come to your events. I mean, you'll, you'll see as you have events here, I mean, all walks from Baltimore show up and, and it's, yeah. it's welcoming. Uh, it and I don't know if art has always been welcoming. No, it's not. It hasn't. I mean, when I, my goodness, when I first, I have a banking and finance background oh, yeah. for the record. Okay. And in Detroit, I literally turned down the Heidelberg Street Street. It is a street museum. Oh, okay. I turned down that street by accident. And I said, what in the H-E double hockey sticks is all this? <laughs> With my nose kind of turned up. Yeah. And when the artist says, well, it's art. And I said, well, no, art belongs in a museum, kind of a concept, you know, where you have a certain mentality about art. You can't chew gum. Sure. You can't go past the lines. Mm -hmm and you can look from a distance. Well, all those rules were broken at the Heidelberg Project, and Rebecca also broke those rules. Yeah. And you can interact, you can read, you can understand what's in the artist's mind, you can know um, more about how it resonates with you, and you can be challenged to draw out your own creative energy. Yes. That's the best part, yeah. because I wrote my first poem at 18, but it wasn't really encouraged, you know, young African-American woman, you go get a job, go to college, get a job, you know, mm, stable, steady. Yeah. And then I wrote my no next 300 poems after I met Tyree Guyton. Your so, next 300? Yeah. So there's an artist in all of us, well. and I think that we're all creators. Still ahead on 11 TV Hill, our conversation with Janine Whitfield continues. Five years from now, what's the goal for you? What's the mark that you've left on, on AVAN? Plus, the role she wants to see the museum take on when it comes to fostering connections with the city's young people.